Ed. That's right, folks. C for comedy, A for Abbott, M for Maxwell, E for Ennis, L for Lou Costello. Put them all together and they spell camel. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. And draw up a chair for tonight's Camel Show, starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. <laughs> hey, Costello. Costello. Come over here, Costello. You know, I tried to find you last night. Where in the world were you? Oh, I spent the evening over at Hedy Lamar's house, Abbott. Hedy calls me two or three times every week to come over and spend the evening. Yeah, doesn't her husband object? Why should he? I'm the cheapest babysitter in town. <laughs> Will you talk sense, please? <laughs> hey, Lou, I hope you're saving the money. I hope you're saving the money they pay you for minding that baby. Oh, you know, sure. we pay our income tax March 15th. Oh, don't worry about me, Abbott. I'm loaded. I got a California bankroll. What's a California bankroll? Two singles wrapped around an orange. Oh. <laughs> hey, Abbott. Last night I was helping Hedy Lamar figure her income tax. Oh, how can you, how can you figure income tax? You can't even count. Give me a problem. Go oh, ahead. all Give right, all right, all right. Give suppose, me a problem. Give me a suppose problem. Suppose steak costs a dollar a pound. Yep. Uh, how many pounds would the butcher give you for five dollars? Four pounds. Uh, that's not right. I know, but they're getting away with it. All right. <laughs> Listen, Costello, you're impossible. But I'm warning you, you'd better get busy on your income tax. Do you have any uh, surplus money, Lou? No. I'm so broke, Abbott. I had to dump four bottles of Coca-Cola in the sink so I could collect the deposit on the bottles. <laughs> Well, things will be even worse if you don't file your income tax. And remember, you've got to give them an honest count. Hey, Abbott, how can you say that? I always give them an honest count. I'm patriotic. And besides that, they watch you too close. <laughs> them collectors, oh boy, they're pretty sharp, Abbott. I once met an income tax man on the plane. We hit four air pockets. He had his hand in every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that, Costello. We should all be glad to pay our tax, even if it does leave us a little poorer. You're right, Abbott, because no matter how poor it makes us, we're better off than some people. Like that fellow I was reading about in the book the other day, Jack and the Beanstalk. What was it about? Well, this story is about a boy who was very, very poor. His name was Jack. Now, when Jack was a little bit hey, of a wait boy... Wait how did he, he get the name of Jack, Lou? Huh? How did he get the name of Jack? How did he get the name of Jack? Yes. <laughs> how did he get the name of Jack? <laughs> he was born while his father was changing a tire. All right. <laughs> How did he get the name of Jack? All right, go ahead. You're starting a little soon, Abbott. Well, go ahead, go ahead. Now, just keep your mouth out of this and let me tell a story. Uh, yeah. Abbott, why don't you go over to a shoe repair shop and show them what a real heel looks like? Oh, now, please, go ahead and tell the story. Now, one morning, his mother said, Jack, we have no money, so you'll have to sell the cow. What kind was it, a heifer? Yes, it was a... <laughs> What'd you say? A heifer. Was it a heifer cow? How could it be a heifer cow? It was a whole cow. All right, all right. <laughs> Look, Abbott, it was just, just a plain cow, and it wore red slacks, so Jack started to milk the cow. Now, just a and, minute. Now, wait a minute. How could he milk the cow if it was wearing red slacks? He was a pickpocket. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, Jack was walking along the road with the cow, and he noticed that the cow looked very tired. The cow hadn't been sleeping very good. Did, he, so the he cow, did the cow have bags under her eyes? <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> did the cow have bags under her eyes? Did the cow have bags under her eyes? That's what I ask you. Abbott, you never saw a cow, did you? Oh, get out. Get out. All right, get out. Go ahead, let's hear it. Come on. Well, Jack walked a little farther, and then he saw a farmer was making Limburger cheese. What was he and making it out of? Out of doors. Ain't I a uh. speaker? <laughs> Mother, get the flea powder. I'm lousing them up tonight. Right. <laughs> Castella, forget this silly story. We were talking about income tax. I'm, I'm sure you know nothing about it, so why don't you go down to the bank and get my brother to help you out with it? Oh, that reminds me of it. My mother asked me to ask you, what's your brother's job in a bank? Tell her. What? <laughs> tell her, tell her. I will tell her if you tell me. I, I, I just told you, tell her. You didn't tell me nothing. You gave me the same stuff last week. All I want is a civilized answer. Now, wait a minute, Costello. You said your mother wants to know what my brother does in the bank. Yeah, that's right. And I said, tell her. All right, I will. Now, what does he do? I just told you, tell her. You told me to tell her, but you didn't tell me what to tell her. Tell her, tell her. Tell her, tell her? What kind of talk is that? Look, Abbott, when I get home tonight, my mother says to me, what does Abbott's brother do in a bank? What do I say? Uh, tell her in the bank. How can I tell her in a bank? The bank's not closed. <laughs> Look, when I get home, I want to tell her in the house. 
Listen, you dummy. When I, when I say tell her, I don't mean tell her. I mean tell her. And that's what my brother does in the bank. His job is tell her. Tell her. Now do you get it? Oh, when you say tell her, you don't mean tell her. You mean tell her. Tell her. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Your brother works in a bank. Now, that's right. What job did he have before the job he's got now? Oh, he was in charge of a very important department. That's fine. What department? Vaults. Could I have that again? Vaults, Costello, vaults. Vaults? Abbott, you know I can't vault. But I will try a rumba. No, no, Costello, let go of me. Play, Ennis, play. And remember, Abbott, you asked for this dance. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher. The time, several months ago. Two men are lunching together. Cigarette in? Oh, thanks. I guess I will. Say, you've uh, changed your brand, haven't you? I don't remember that you smoked camels before. Well, I didn't until the wartime cigarette shortage. You know how everybody smoked whatever brand they could get then. It sure gave you a good opportunity to compare all brands. Well, I found I liked camels so much better than the others, even my old brand, that I've been smoking camels ever since. Yes, during that wartime cigarette shortage, the experience of smoking whatever brands they could get taught millions the differences in cigarette quality. Smokers' T-Zones, that's T for taste and T for throat, tested more cigarette brands than they'd normally try in a lifetime. That experience taught smokers that it was camels for rich flavor and cool mildness. Camels for extra smoking pleasure. As a result, more people smoke camels than ever before. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. And now, while you enjoy a camel, Skinny Anna sings, If this isn't love, the whole world is crazy. If this isn't love, I'm daft as a daisy With moons all around And cows jumping over There's something amiss And I'll eat your hat if this isn't love I'm feeling like the apple On top of William Tell With this I cannot grapple Because, because you saw a doorbell If this isn't love Then winter is summer If this isn't love My heart needs a plumber I'm swinging on stars I'm riding on rainbows I'm busting with bliss and I'll kiss your hand if this isn't love. If this isn't love, the whole world is crazy. If this isn't love, I'm daft as a daisy. I'm swinging on stars And I'm riding on rainbows I'm busting with bliss And I'll kiss your hand if this isn't love Well, Costello, here's the income tax accountant my brother recommended Now... Let's go in and see him, because you know nothing about finance. Who knows nothing, nothing about finance? <laughs> <laughs> I study finance with Morgenthau, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, Guggenheim, and Lana Turner. Oh, wait a minute. What could you learn from Lana Turner? More than I could learn from Morgenthau, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, and Guggenheim. <laughs> All talk says, let's go into the accountant's office. Come on. I won't tell you. I won't tell you how much I made last year. I won't tell you. Nobody can make me jail. Who was that? Nora Prentice. <laughs> Come on, Costello. You've got to find the tax accountant. Oh, I'll ask that woman over there. Uh, pardon me, miss. Can well, you tell me... Well, if it isn't Mr. Allbutt. Oh, hello. And Mr. Costello. Oh. You fought, little man, you. 
It's so nice to meet you, a goon. Every time we meet you, we meet a goon. Quiet, Costello. Uh, what brings you here, miss? I came to see my accountant about the taxes I owe to the government. The government? <laughs> the government? Oh, yes, Abbott. That's in Washington, D.C. <laughs> That's where President Truman lives. Well, I must be rambling off. As they say in Russian, and a mushy meatball and a kisser to you, too. <laughs> Well, come on, Costello. Here's the accountant to help you. Aha, gentlemen. As George Washington said to Thomas Jefferson, sit down. <laughs> I'm just concluding some business with this client, and I'll be with you in a moment. And now, as I was saying, about that $100,000 that you made last Saturday afternoon, we'll have to figure out the tax on it and get in touch with you later. <laughs> nice client, that Oliveri. <laughs> Well, now, gentlemen, as Cleopatra said to Mark Antony, what can I do for you? Well, uh, <laughs> Mr. Costello here wants you to help him with his income tax. Fine, fine. Now, Mr. Costello, how much money did you make last year? Well, I... Speak right up, young man. Speak right up. All this information is confidential. Well, I made... Tell me about it. Tell me. <laughs> how much did you make? Well, it was an... Help with the tongue. <laughs> Has a cat got your tongue? Get the marbles out of your mouth. Now, Mr. Costello, if you don't fill out your income tax form, you'll go to jail. They'll put you behind bars in Leavenworth, Kansas, or Atlanta, Georgia. Please, Abbott, not Georgia. Don't let them send me to Atlanta. It's terrible to be in jail in Georgia. Why? Two wardens. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get down to business now. As John Alden once said to Miles Standish, did you work last year? <laughs> Yes, and I had a very steady job. Aha. Uh -huh. What did you do? I was best man at Artie Shaw's wedding. <laughs> In the fiscal year of 46, by what method did you ascertain your income? Well, what was that? Oh, the, the man wants to know how you filled out your form last year. By eating mashed potatoes and banana splits. <laughs> <laughs> now let's look your papers over. Uh-huh. I've got great news for you, Costello. <laughs> According to these figures, last year you earned $495. And if you don't make any more money between now and March 15th, you don't have to pay any income tax. I promise. I won't make any money. I'll work for nothing. I'll work for less than nothing. Now, how can you do that? I'll become a public school teacher. <laughs> Costello, don't make another penny. Don't even steal in telephone slots or pay, uh, play pinball machines. Thanks, mister. And you can send me a bill. Yes. As Josephine said to Napoleon, I will. <laughs> oh, boy, Abbott, am I happy. No income tax to pay. No problem. Hello, Mr. Abbott. Up to now. <laughs> Hello there, Mrs. Wetwash. Well, Mr. Abbott, I see they've grounded the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> oh, pardon me, it's Costello. <laughs> I'm so excited. I just came from the doctor. He's going to change my nose. Good. Maybe this time they can put it in the middle of your face. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Wetwash, Costello just filed his personal income tax. Oh, you fat little businessman, you. I'd hate to pay the tax on your corporation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I taxed my brain for that one. Mrs. Wetwash, there's no tax on abandoned property. <laughs> Reminds me, Costello, I still owe you $20 for mowing the lawn last month. Gee, that's well. And uh, I... don't take it, Costello. Remember what the man said. Uh oh, that's right. Uh, Mrs. Wetwash, I don't want your money. But you did the work, and the money is yours. Mrs. Wetwash, you couldn't force me to take that money. Oh, now, isn't that sweet? Well, if you won't take the money, then I must give you a great big kiss. Okay. You forced me. <laughs> give me the money. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Wetwash. <laughs> now, Costello, look what you've done. You've got $20, too much money. Hey, Abbott, don't let them put me in jail. Hiya, fellas. Well, it's Skinny Ennis. <laughs> hey, Abbott. Hey, Abbott. Now, maybe I can unload this dough on him. Hey, Skinny, could you use 20 bucks? No, me? I got plenty of money. 
I'd have sold an invention for automobiles that will save racehorse players a lot of money. Oh, now, wait a minute. How can an attachment for an automobile save racehorse players a lot of money? Well, every time they get within seven miles of a racetrack, the car blows up. <laughs> hey, by the way, Costello, here's the $20 I borrowed from you last week. Oh, forget about that, Skinny. Wait a minute. I don't want that money. You couldn't force me to take it. Okay. You won't take the money. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a brand new routine. You say, Abbott, what does your brother do at the bank? And he says, tell her. And you say, tell her what? Wait a minute. He says, tell her. Wait a minute. 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 <laughs> you forced me. Give me the money. Okay. Well, so long, fellas. Costello, you did it again. Now you've got $40 too much. Let's go out and buy $40 worth. $40 worth of what? And these days, who asked? Oh. <laughs> who asked Louis Costello? Hey, look, it's Marilyn Maxwell. There you are, Lewis, honey. I haven't seen you since the cocktail party last Saturday. Did you get home all right? Yes, but I woke up the next morning with big circles under my eyes. From staying up late? No, somebody set a couple of wet beer glasses down on my face. <laughs> By the way, Lewis, I'm selling raffle tickets for my club. They're $5 a piece, and I I'll, want... I'll, I'll, I'll buy eight of them. Lewis, eight would be $40. Can you afford to buy eight? I can't afford to buy any less. Oh, now, Lewis, I appreciate your spirit, but you couldn't force me to take all that money. Marilyn Maxwell, you sell me eight tickets or I'll kiss you right here. Okay, you force me. Here are the tickets. <laughs> Camel presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of The Beginning or the End. And here's Marilyn to sing for Camel fans everywhere. I believe, I believe, I believe in wishing well. And I also believe in a lot of things, things the days it tells. I believe, I believe that only clover brings lots of luck, lots of joy, lots of happiness. I believe those things. And when it's Christmas, I believe in Santa Claus. Why do I believe? I guess that I believe because I believe, I believe, I believe that dreams come true. If you wish for the dream by a wishing well, don't tell the wish or you'll break the spell. It may sound naive, but that's what I believe. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. No part of the country was too remote, no town was too small. For that survey of cigarette preferences among doctors was truly nationwide. Doctors in all parts of the country, doctors in all branches of medicine were included. Three leading independent research organizations asked this question of 113,597 doctors. What cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand named most was Camel. Try a Camel on your T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. Your proving ground for any cigarette. And you'll understand the reasons for this preference. See if your taste doesn't joyously respond to Camel's rich flavor. See if your throat isn't extra happy with Camel's cool mildness. See if you too don't say, yes, Camel suits my T-zone to a T. <laughs> Well, Costello, that $40 you gave Marilyn for the uh, raffle tickets finally brought you down to $495, your original non-taxable income. 
Now, do you think you can keep away from making any more money till March 15th? Oh, certainly. My Uncle Artie Stebbins taught me that a man can do anything he puts his mind to. Uncle Artie once made up his mind to be a butterfly. He hollered, I'm a butterfly! I'm a butterfly! Did he turn into a butterfly? No, but they took him away in a net. <laughs> I've been looking all over for you. Have you heard the news? Yes, Marilyn. Dick Tracy captured influence. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean the news about the raffle. Somebody won a lot of money. Oh, that's all right, Marilyn. I expect it to lose, but I'll be a success someday. <laughs> Costello, to be a success, you've got to have brains. I've got brains. And you have to work hard. I'll work hard. And you've got to keep away from women. I'll work hard. I... <laughs> Who cares about money? I even wish I had more money to lose. You have. Good. I'm glad that I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what did you say, Marilyn? Yes, Louis. The eight chances you bought for me won the first eight prizes in the raffle. No. So here's your money. $3,000. No. <laughs> no. Marilyn, what have you done to me? After what we've meant to each other, I treated you so nice. I took you out. I took you to the swellest places, showed you a good time. And now, in 10 days before income taxes are due, you put me in a higher bracket. Oh, I wish I was dead broke. <laughs> well, Lewis, I don't understand you. You should take that $3,000 and sink it into something. A great idea. Where's the nearest river? Uh, uh, <laughs> come, Costello. We've got to work fast. See you later, Marilyn. Yeah, but what are we going to do now? Huh? Tell her you ingrate. Yeah. You and your raffle tickets. Here I work my fingers to the bone. I slave. I stay up nights thinking how to, how to keep you broke. And you go behind my back and win $3,000. Why? Why do you always do these things to me? Oh, I'm the bad boy! Uh, I'll say you are. You have the brains of a low-grade idiot. Okay, Abbott. You can have it back anytime you want it. Now, never mind. Now, you listen to me. You've got to get rid of that $3,000. Uh, do you hear? But how, Abbott? Well, wait a minute. I've got it. We'll give $1,000 apiece to the first three people we meet. Oh, pardon me, gentlemen. I'm in distress. Would you help me out? Help you out of this dress? Lady, you can't walk around the streets without a dress on. Shame on the lady. Shame on the Costella, lady. Costella, Costella, please. The lady wants to walk around yeah, no, 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 no. Shame on you. Costella, you don't understand. Bad lady. Look, low, low, please. When she says she's in distress, she's not talking about this dress she's in. She's talking about distress she wants to get out of. She must be Gypsy Rose Lee's grandmother. No. <laughs> no, 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 Costello. Can't you see this old lady is in distress? Certainly. Well, she wants to get out of it. Don't just stand there, Rabbit. Put a screen around her. <laughs> Young man, when I say distress, I don't mean distress like this dress I'm wearing. I mean distress like the distress you're in when you're in distress. Madam, where do you live? <laughs> in the old lady's home. How do you like that? Now they're doing our routines in the old lady's home. <laughs> Cut that out, Costello. G give the lady a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars? A thousand dollars. That's right. Here it is. A thousand dollars right on the nose. Be happy. Be happy? <laughs> I certainly will. Oh, thank you, thank you, well, thank you. Come on, Costello. You've got two thousand dollars left. Let's get rid of it. Fast. Yes, Abbott. You're right. We got to go. All we... right, you guys. All right. This is a stick-up. Oh, a burglar. Shut up. This is a stick-up man. <laughs> Look at his puss. What's he got to be stuck up about? <laughs> Look, you, when he says I'm a stick-up man, he don't mean I'm stuck up. He means that... What am I saying? I got no time for routines. Come on, come on, heist them. <laughs> Mr. Burglar, will you please say heist them again? What for? My pants are falling down. <laughs> hey, is that gun a 45? Yeah. What's the matter? Couldn't you get a 46 delivery? <laughs> uh. Don't be a wise guy, you. You could rob me of the last joke if you care to. <laughs> Don't be a wise guy. My trigger finger is itching. I'll scratch it for you. Yeah, cut, 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 will, you will you shut up or you'll kill us? Wait a minute. What are you applauding for? When he said kill us, my whole life passed before me. The Costello story starring Larry Parks. <laughs> come on, you. Come on. Come on. Hand over the dough. Hey, Costello. Costello, this is your chance to get rid of the $2,000. Oh, that's right. You're right, Abbott. Here, Mr. Burglar, here is $2,000 for you. What? I wish, I, I wish you'd have stuck me up about five minutes ago. I could have given you $3,000. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is this? This is a funny stick-up. You seem to be happy to get rid of this dough. What is it, Confederate? Oh. <laughs> no, no, 
no, no, Mr. Costello just wants to get rid of this money. You see, that $2,000 puts him in a, in a higher uh, income bracket. Oh, oh, well, that's just... Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Well, 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 what's the matter? I'm just figuring me earnings for the year. <laughs> Let me see. I heisted the bank in Frisco. That was $21,000. The bank in Oakland, that was $42,000. Then I stuck up the bank in Prismo Beach. You must have got a few thousand clams out of there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I can't pay tax on all that loot. I gotta get rid of it. Yes, sir. And you'd better do it before March 15th, too. March 15th? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get rid of it right now. Here, Fatso. Here's $35,000. <laughs> and I ain't gonna take it. You'll take it or I'll brain you. Uh, don't be afraid of him, Costello. Stand up to him. Don't be a coward. You're not afraid of him. That's right. I ain't afraid of you. I've got courage you haven't got. I've got fortitude you haven't got. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Now I've got a lump on the head that you haven't got. Here's the money. So long, jerk. Hey, Abbott, what am I going to do with all this money? Give it to somebody, quick. Here comes an old lady. I'll give it to her. Uh, pardon me, madam. Would you like... Oh, there you are. I've been looking all oh. over for you. Hey, Abbott, it's the same old lady I gave the other thousand dollars to. Yes, I am. And remember when you gave me the thousand dollars, you said be happy? Yes. Well, be happy, won the race, and paid 90 to one. Abbott! Here's your share, $45,000. Abbott! Get me out of here! Abbott and Costello will be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Biloxi, Mississippi, U.S. Army Percy Jones General Hospital, Battle Creek, Michigan, U.S. Naval Hospital, Houston, Texas, U.S. Marine Hospital, Lexington, Kentucky, and Veterans Hospital, Fort Logan, Colorado. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, back to Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Well, Costello, you got to get rid of that money before March 15th. Uh, but don't worry. Next week, I'll take you out to the racetrack. And we'll bet on the big jockeys. They're bound to lose. By the way, Abbott, what is the difference between the big jockeys and the little jockeys? Wait. Okay, I waited. Now you can tell me. <laughs> I just told you. You just told me what? No, I told you wait. Why do I have to wait? Why can't you tell me now? Oh, Costello, you're impossible. I'm going home. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry we can't wait to hear any more about Wait tonight. Abbott and Costello will be back next Thursday, so you'll have to wait for a wait until then when Lou Costello plays the pony. Mr. Pipe Smoker, it's up to you whether you're smoking just a pipe or one that's filled with pipe appeal. To fill your pipe with pipe appeal, just pack in Prince Albert and enjoy the rich, tasty flavor of Prince Albert's ripe, mild tobacco. Enjoy cool, tongue-easy mildness, too, because Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite and crimp cut to burn slow and even. So pack your pipe with good PA for pipe appeal. And for a half hour packed with good music and fun, tune in to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry on Saturday night. Tap your feet and warm your heart to the American folk singing of Red Foley with his guitar. Laugh with Minnie Pearl and the Duke of Paducah. Remember, Grand Ole Opry, Saturday night on NBC. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. C-A-M-E-L-S Abbott and Costello will soon be seen in the new Universal International picture, Buck Privates Come Home. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. <laughs> Stay tuned now for the Eddie Cantor Show. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.